The epistle appointed to be read for this, the first Sunday of the first Mass of Christmas, is taken from the epistle of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God our Savior has appeared to all men, instructing us in order that rejecting ungodliness and worldly lusts, we may live temperately and justly and piously in this world, looking for the blessed hope and glorious coming of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and cleanse for himself an acceptable people, pursuing good works. Thus speak and exhort in Christ Jesus our Lord. And the Holy Gospel is taken from St. Luke. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. At that time, a decree went forth from Caesar Augustus that a census of the whole world should be taken. This first census took place while Chirinus was governor of Syria, and all were going each to his own town to register. And Joseph also went from Galilee out of the town of Nazareth into Judea to the town of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to register, together with Mary, his espoused wife, who was with child. And it came to pass while they were there that the days for her to be delivered were fulfilled. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds in the same district, living in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood by them, and the glory of God shone around about them, and they feared exceedingly. And the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be to all the people. For today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you, who is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign to you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men of good will. Thus for this feast day's holy gospel. My beloved people, I wish to take this opportunity in the name of the members of our communities, both of the fathers, the monks, and the sisters, to wish each and every one of you a very wonderful, holy, and blessed Christmas. And we wish this also for all those you love most. And we pray that Almighty God will be with all of you as we ask that you pray that he be with all of us. We especially welcome our visitors. We're very happy to have you. And we hope that by your visit with us this morning, we will do that little something, whatever it is, that might raise the level of edification in you and bring you just that little bit closer to the heavenly king. 
This morning, we're very blessed for two men, two fully grown men, knowing what they are about, will make their first Holy Communion in this church. This is a royal blessing. I ask you, please, if you will, to remain seated uh, at the time of Holy Communion till these two gentlemen, each in turn, will come up to the communion rail and receive their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for the first time. I ask you to pray for them that in their faith they may come to believe and have believed and remain in belief and remain in hope and remain in adoration to the Heavenly Lord. And I ask them that as they have him in their hearts this morning, that they will talk to him and ask him for a blessing for us all. Tomorrow morning at the 10 o'clock Mass, as you know, all will be, this Mass will be for all of us, all of you. And we ask Almighty God to place his particular blessing on all of us and you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. My beloved people, it is always easier for me to speak at other times, but somehow or other at such a time as this each year, I have a difficulty. I guess because I stand in the way of the glory that is manifest at this time. You will recall from having read the gospel that the very first ones who were notified of this were a group of men, illiterate, common, sheep herders in the hills in the middle of the night. And these ignorant men were greeted by a most unusual group, angels, we are told, no less. And they were told where to go to find this unusual, as they later referred to him, let us go and see this thing that we have been told about. And they went. And as they approached, without anyone giving them instructions as to what to do, and not really knowing who it is that they had come to see, they fell on their knees and they adored. We are not on this occasion merely commemorating the birthday of some great figure, some historical figure, someone who has served his country well, who has done good and all such like. We're not, we're not commemorating such a one. We are commemorating, we are reliving in truth. We are reliving an event that unless we are people of belief 
And unless we are people of strong belief, we are reliving the central point of the history of mankind. As has been pointed out to us at other times, and as also as is pointed out to us in today's bulletin, he lived amongst men. He walked amongst men. They called his name Jesus but they knew him not. He went amongst his own, and his own received him not. The ones who were supposed to know, the ones, the educated ones, the well-read ones, they talked to him, they touched him, they argued with him. Of course, later on as he grew up. But they didn't know who they were talking to. All they saw was a man. And they left it at that. We've talked about this, haven't we? But he was not just a man. He was the second person of the Blessed Trinity, the Word. The Word made flesh. Imagine, in last Sunday's bulletin, we pointed out the unbelievable love that the Almighty Father had for us, that he sent this Word down to us who from the very beginning from the very first moment of his life from the very first wail of his baby life to the last cry on the cross he suffered and this morning you will notice that we have the decoration the, the decorations of the church as usual but we came up with an idea that in the midst of this beautiful decoration, if you will look over here, you will see a vase filled with thorns. And that is why he came to earth, not because he came to suffer with thorns and crucifixion, but he came to pay a, a, to pay a debt, a ransom debt to his father who had been offended by us. And we didn't see that, and we still don't see that. And how many people there are who simply do not comprehend it. And to add insult to injury, it is now not a politically, however you want to say it, a correct expression to use the word Christmas. Because the word Christmas has Christ in it. And it is not politically good to use the word Christ. Of all things, of all things, that man now finds it impolite and degrading and demeaning and anything else you wish to call it, to simply refer to their Lord and Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Isn't that 
shameful. Shame on man that he has come to such low ebb, to such low levels. We here this morning, I hope, I know I'm, I shouldn't have even used the word hope. That was incorrect of me to say that. We here this morning, I fully appreciate that we know why we're here. Oh yes, we had a little ceremony around a little statue and another little ceremony around the crib, all that. Those are plaster saints. They're made of plaster. But they're very dear. You may have noticed that when we were blessing this particular little crib here, that there was an object in the middle that got special attention of insensation. We're very, very fortunate in that little golden cross there at the top, we have, we're very fortunate to have a fragment of the swaddling clothes of Jesus Christ. That little piece of cloth actually, so far as we know from the documents that we have proving this, that piece of cloth actually touched the body of the baby Jesus. And we're extremely fortunate to have that. My beloved people, we know why we're here. We're here to give adoration. We're here to display love. And how much have we talked about love in the last several weeks? It was love that made this event. Whose love? The love of the Father. Whose love? The love of the Son, the Word. Whose love? The love of the Spirit. Father, Son, and Spirit. One God. That's why we're here to commemorate this, to believe in it, to live it, to accept it, and to be of it. Again, my beloved people, I wish to take this opportunity to bless all of you and to pray for all of you. This Mass I offer up, of course, Family is family, isn't it? This Mass I offer up for my own brothers here in this community and my own sisters here in this community. This Mass belongs to us. It has to be. Because the suffering that we are going through in order to be able to keep little bits and pieces of the most sacred of all sacred for us all to have and to cherish and to love. How we are so persecuted because we are doing what we know has to be done. We have no choice. And so my Mass this morning is for us. And I ask you please to pray for us and to protect us by Almighty God's help. I ask for your special prayers for things to come in decisions that we have to make, serious decisions, big decisions that we have to make. We ask for your prayers. We beg your prayers. Tomorrow morning at the 10 o'clock Mass, that Mass belongs to you. 
and it belongs to all people wherever they are on this earth who look upon us and see in us something that may be a source of hope and inspiration to them that tomorrow morning the Mass is for them and you. May Almighty God bless you, my people. May Almighty God bless you, my visitors, our visitors. And if you will all please kneel, I will give you a Christmas blessing.